Okay, hi Bio 103. I've been hearing from several of you um, wondering how to most effectively study for Bio 103 and most importantly for the upcoming exam. So I'm making this video um, and I'm just going to go through how um, how to study for Bio 103. And I'm actually going to focus a lot on how to get through the, how to get through the recorded lectures, how to get the most out of them, right? Because ultimately you are responsible for that content. And so how do you process all that content? How do you um, organize all of that content so that you can recall it later? For when you're being tested on it okay so it will not surprise you uh, that my number one piece of advice is to write out the learning goals on the first slide and the key concepts on the final slide and this is before you even start the lecture okay so pause the video on the first slide write it out write out those learning goals fast forward all the way to the end of the lecture and pause and write down the key concepts and these will be very handy to have next to you as you are watching the lecture and I know it sounds very elementary. So for some of you watching, you may think you're better than that. that you're better than writing out these le learning goals and key concepts that are already typed out for you. You may think, why would I bother doing that when it's already printed out on the slide? I'm just gonna read it to myself, right? Because I know that because that is what I would have thought um, as a student, right? Because I, I was a student actually <laughs> at some point in time. It may be, have been a decade or more ago, um, but it happened. Um, and that is the thought process that I definitely would have gone through. Um, but I kid you not, something about the physical motion of writing it out rather than reading it helps you to process it. And there's actual evidence for this. Um, so believe it or not, writing out the concepts helps you to process them. Um, and just to show you that, um, that I'm serious about this, I live by my own words. So even, even though I have sat through this um, 103, multiple times, I still watch every lecture. So here are my notes from February 1st, 2021. The sun is out, so hopefully you can see that. But those are my learning goals and key concepts written out for lecture one, okay? Um, and I do that because I truly believe that these learning goals and key concepts are indispensable for setting the stage of that lecture. And um, it not only serves as your guide that you can refer back to on what is important, um, as you get into some of the details of the specific examples and experimental data, right? This is, this is what's going to help you to orient yourself to know what's going on, right? It will help you bring you back to center, right? What is the main point? It's your foundation for the entire lecture. So it's, it's so important to make sure that you have a good foundation before you build on top of it or else nothing else in the lecture is going to make sense and it's not even going to stick, right? And that's the ultimate goal, right? The key to studying is not is not that it makes sense to you in the moment of learning it when it's first presented to you, right? What's important is that you actually remember and can recall this information when you're being tested on it later. So good organizational skills and a good foundation is essential for storing what you have learned into long-term storage. So thinking of your brain as a sort of filing cabinet system of lots of information, right? In order for you to find your birth certificate that you put into the filing cabinet, ages ago necessi necessitates a good filing system that can be accessible to you when you actually need it, right? So in the, in the moment of taking a test, when you actually need that information, are you gonna be able to access that information? Okay, my second piece of advice, right, is to remember that although one of the benefits of the bio sequence is that you get to hear from four different professors, right, all experts in their respective fields, right, remembering that they ultimately have each of them, their different teaching styles, right? And that is just a fact of life, that there are four different people, right? So it's advantageous for you to recognize and appreciate each style for what it is, right? So that you can effectively learn from them. Professor Zhang, for example, will state the main key point or concept usually towards the end of explaining that slide or after a connected set of slides, okay? So once he has gone through the example or sets of examples to demonstrate a key concept, and this is in contrast to that of Professor Cole, who tends to do this at the beginning of that slide or set of slides, okay? And while everyone has their own style and preferences and thus ultimately you may prefer one style over another, the fact is is that you have to adjust accordingly, okay? So get comfortable. Get comfortable with temporarily not knowing everything or not knowing exactly the direction of where things are headed until towards the end of that slide or set of slides as it will become more clear as it is explained. Okay, and be patient with yourself. If you're feeling lost and overwhelmed with all the detail, for this, I recommend taking a break, writing down what has been said so far. I find that helpful in the moment. 
Um, but once Professor Zhang gets to the end of the slide, he will usually have a red box with the main point, which should indicate to you that this is important. Whenever he gets to the main point in the red box, pause a moment, think about what that means, and to which key concept it's related to. The red box ultimately is a good indicator to pause. Okay. All right, third piece of advice. Um, if you haven't noticed by now, Professor Zhang packs his lectures with lots of cool and fascinating examples to demonstrate overarching key concepts in development and genetics. And these examples, uh, again, they're playing up and they give emphasis to those key concepts, right? So after each example, it's important to go back to the key concepts and to um, perhaps, if this makes sense to you, write down to which key concept that example demonstrates. So rather than looking like a list of concepts like what I just showed you, um, actually what might be best and what I have found works best for students, for students is that um, your notes will ultimately look more like a web, right? Where you have interconnecting nodes, you'll have concepts and examples being nodes in the web that connect to each other. Um, and, and not only do key concepts uh, interconnect with other concepts within a lecture, but they can connect with each other within a module, right? And not only that, they can connect to other key concepts that you learned in other modules. So what you're learning now in 103 connects back to what you learned in 101, connects back to what you learned in 102, right? And it definitely connects with what you will learn in 104. So establishing those connections is a really great way to organize those key concepts so that you actually are more likely to remember them, not just for your exam, but beyond the bio sequence. So when you're taking your upper levels, okay? In previous years, some students have actually emailed me pictures of such webs when I've recommended that. Um, and, and they've either built them, literally built them, or, or just drawn them on paper and pencil, right, with paper and pen. And um, the most impressive one that I can actually recall, actually spanning the floor of a common room of um, a residential college, for example. Okay. I can't remember what, what number we're on. I think fifth piece of advice, fourth. Um, but when you get to the end of the lecture, I recommend that you take a moment. Don't just rush off quite yet, right? Take a moment, try to summarize in your own words in a couple sentences, the main points in what stuck out to you, right? Everything that you can recall, right? Without looking at your notes necessarily, right? Just everything you can recall, free form writing. And, and then once you've had a chance to do that, right, importantly, Again, making those connections, how everything in that lecture is connected. Try to make as many connections as possible for the things that you've learned, learned within that lecture or within previous lectures, as the more connections you can make, the more likely you will remember those things. Okay, um, next piece of advice um, is captions. So there's a little CC button for closed captioning at the bottom of every lecture. Um, and just to give you a little bit behind the scenes on this, um, when a lecture is posted, we just turn on automatic captioning and the software does its best to automatically transcribe to the best of its ability. However, um, <clears throat> it's not perfect and actually sometimes it's really no good. So um, uh, we actually have a team of undergraduate technical assistants to help do this and to check and correct the captions. Um, correcting the captions is very time intensive though, however. So depending on when you're watching the lecture, they may have not been quite finished yet. Hopefully captions have been completed by the time you're watching it. That, that would, that's ideal, obviously. Um, but in any case, once the captions are done, they are extremely helpful if you are a visual learner like myself, not an auditory learner, um, right? So for example, to the frustration of my partner, we often watch movies with subtitles on, even though I can, I can hear just fine. Um, I necessarily don't need them, um, but it helps me focus. It helps me focus on what on the material at hand, right? Because not only are you hearing the words, but you're seeing the words. And so in conjunction, not if you're taking notes, right? Not only are you hearing the words, seeing the words, but you're writing out the words. This helps you to remember things later on. Okay, um, another piece of advice is just take advantage of the fact that these lectures are recorded. So you could spend three hours watching a one and a half hour lecture and you will get so much more out of it rather than breezing through that lecture um, and then having to go back through and spend even more time trying to process it all. So my advice is to spend more time watching the lecture once and processing it as you go through rather than having to watch it multiple times and trying to go back through because that's frustrating and, and ultimately that's just not as effective in my experience. 
So in the end, I believe doing a good job and watching it and processing it at the same time, um, doing a good job doing, doing that once saves you time later on, okay? Because you'll have good notes, you will have made good connections, and um, you won't look at your notes and be like, what the heck does that mean? Okay, so that's my, my experience. Okay, if you're having trouble with a pati particular concept and perhaps the explanation from lecture just isn't doing it for you, it might mean that you actually need another resource. And for this, I recommend first going to the textbook. So we have recommended readings. You can actually do them or you can skim through them or you can directly go to the in index to look up specific words in their location in the book, right? Google is also great. And it's a way, um, it's a great way to find a bazillion other people explaining the same concepts, but in their own words, which may harmonize more with your particular learning style and thus complete your understanding of that concept. Okay, YouTube is my personal favorite. Um, so for example, if you wanted to understand how the Lac Z reporter works, or if you want to watch frog embryogenesis, you can do so, right? There's videos of these. Um, there are some great videos to help you visualize um, a lot of the dynamic processes that you're learning in developmental biology um, that do a much better job than a PowerPoint slide. And some of the content on YouTube is very high quality and well made, right? They're, they're just really good productions um, and others not so much. So just choose wisely. Um, ultimately on the exam, as you will see in the practice, the hardest questions um, will be the ones where you will be presented an entire, sorry, it's very bright. Um, the hardest questions will be uh, the ones where you will be presented an entirely new situation and you will have to apply what you know, right? For example, that some cell determinants, cell fate determinants function in a concentration gradient. And thus, depending on how far you are from the source of that secreted cell fate determinant, a different cell fate you may attain. So if given an entirely new secreted factor that was not mentioned in the lecture or or given a new scenario where a secreted factor that you did hear about in the lecture is now doing something else in a different process, you can still apply these concepts to hypothesize what is going on or to come up with ways for which you could now test the function of the secreted factor as a self fate determinant. Which brings me to my next point that experimental approaches have always been emphasized thus far in the sequence and 103 is no different. So make sure you have those experimental strategies and approaches in your back, in your back pocket so as Professor Musiker would call them, right, your toolkit that you can just pull out and you can dazzle us um, now with how you would experimentally, experimentally test the function of a gene. Okay, and I'm winding down here. Um, as you go through the lectures, if you have lingering questions, use Ed, right, Ed Discussions. Um, Ed Discussions has been a little light on traffic in comparison to previous years in 103, but I imagine that this might pick up before the exam. So another suggestion that I often give is to respond to your peers' questions. And you can do this anonymously. If you don't feel 100% confident in your thinking or your answer yet, um, and this is a, a really great, great way to test to see if you understand the material. As, as instructors, we will read and check your answers and we can endorse them and correct them, right? In addition to Ed, we also have peer tutors and they have taken this class previously. So they, ha they have some insider tips on how they succeeded in the course. So you don't have to approach them necessarily with questions about the content. You can also approach them with questions about how they succeeded in the course, um, what advice they have, um, what worked for them, right? So I highly encourage you to go to office hours or set up one-on-one -on -one meetings with them to get the inside scoop or the student perspective on how to succeed in the course. Um, and other than that, that completes all of my recommended <laughs> advice um, for how to study. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, also, don't be afraid to post ed discussions. If you're wondering uh, what other study strategies people have, um, start a thread on ed discussions. How do you study? What works for you? Um, we, we did that in 101 and actually I was very proud to see all the responses um, and, and that we were able to create a collaborative environment um, where everyone is able to share their ideas ultimately that's the sort of philosophy we want in the bio sequence. So work together, find a study partner, share tips um, on how to study, um, and good luck everyone.